They look a lot like pancakes or cookies. The recipe passed down from generations here in Haiti. Women spend entire days making them. Grandmothers, daughters, and younger girls. Infants are nursed while mothers work the mix. Kids seem to enjoy them, at least when our camera was around. But these patties, known as bonbon terres by the Haitians who eat them, are a grim reminder of just how poor this Caribbean nation is. They aren't sweet, they're hard to swallow, and add almost nothing in terms of nutrition, because the cookies are actually made of dirt. It fills your stomach. When we haven't eaten anything, this dirt cookie fills your stomach. Traded, sold, and even hoarded by women here in the poorest section of the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, City Soleil in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Small amounts of vegetable shortening, salt, and occasionally sugar are mixed in with the dirt and water as well. Made in places like this, an old fort where torture was once common by corrupt dictators here, Fort de Manche is now a center of commerce built around the dirt cookies, a basketball court, soccer field, and school. Other nasty things. To get to an area where the cookies are laid out to dry out in the sun, you can see that these are still very wet, not quite ready to be served. But this is literally dirt being prepared for humans to eat on top of other dirt and filth. Celine Denis' life revolves around the cookies. For days we watched as the grandmother sat mixing the dirt cookie batter. Selling the cookies is Denis' sole source of income and often her only food. It's a necessary evil. I'm in a bad situation, and that's why I make them. It hurts my heart, but I have no choice. We're forced to eat it. It makes us sick, but not the way it would to anybody who's not used to eating it. Our system is kind of used to it. The dirt is trucked into this huge slum and sold at an enormous markup to the women, who pay about $5 a sack. They say it comes from an area in the mountains and are convinced the dirt is rich in minerals and vitamins. And if they don't have the money, they're happy, indeed eager to buy the dirt on credit. If it rains or the sun is blocked, the cookies can't dry out, and women actually end up owing money on the dirt they've purchased. Not a drop of batter is wasted. And throughout Haiti, the cookies are seen in urban markets and small mountain villages. We rarely saw adults eating the cookies, as many seem to shame. Kids, however, asked repeatedly why we were so interested before freely eating them. The UN's humanitarian coordinator in Haiti says the need for dirt cookies is an indictment of government failure and waste. The five-cent cookies, a necessity in Haiti, imported food too expensive for families living on about a dollar a day. Around 25% of the children are chronically malnourished. These are the same indicators as in, as in sub-Saharan Africa. Pregnant women have long eaten the cookies for their supposed source of calcium and antacid benefits. But doctors dispute this and warn of tooth decay, constipation, and worse. The United States ambassador to Haiti has taken a personal interest in lessening dependence on the cookies. Well, it's, it's worrisome. It's very worrisome, and we don't like to see it. Since the UN arrived in Haiti in 2006 as peacekeepers, nutrition has improved in pockets, but the dirt cookies are still being eaten. The widespread hunger means hundreds of kids starting another school day in City Soleil, as the Haitian flag is raised, will be reduced to eating dirt. This despite international efforts. There is hope, by the way. There is hope. Uh, because despite this bleak picture, it is doable to lift Haiti out of poverty. But even the most optimistic observers agree the future is bleak for these kids without two elements long missing in Haiti. Money and a stable government. Reporting in City Soleil, Haiti, this has been Oshmet for World Focus.